You feel so freaking helpless, don't you? I mean, I know we're not helpless. There's certain things we can do, but there's no guarantees when you send your littles off to school. There's just not. It's just one of the sad realities of living in a free country where mental illness is a factor. It is, um, I told Carrie this morning, I'm like, I'm not going to make it through our time together because I have a nine-year-old daughter and you know, you're talking about like what it looks like, like a childhood. It's horses, it's fairy tales, it's bike rides. It's that the world is good. And our country has created a monster that is manifesting in a mental health crisis of a whole generation and a coming generation. And those little fairy tale childhoods, like my daughter's, are in the line of fire. And yep. we have to start talking about it. And we have to start moving beyond the conversation about guns. Guns have been in the American fabric since inception but something else has changed. And if we're not talking about that, then we're missing the whole plot line and we're only going to see more and more of this. You're so right. You know, you, you, got, you girls know online, if you even say thoughts and prayers in the wake of something like this, these crazy anti-gun activists will start chastising you, like F your thoughts and prayers. Unless you get behind their, their push to control guns, you're in favor of something like this. I, I feel the, I'm starting to feel the same about them. F you and your constant obsession over firearms. We can yeah. get rid of all the firearms and we're still going to have sick homicidal maniacs who want to kill nine-year-olds. And let's deal with that. Why? Your constant knee-jerk obsession about firearms is preventing us from dealing with that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, Carrie, I... We have to talk about that. We have to talk about mental illness. And we do have to be honest about the obvious mental illness that this particular shooter was dealing with. This has been something you guys have been spending a lot of time on because this person was trans, was obviously deeply unwell. Yeah, um, Megan, thanks for having us on today. Um, my son just turned 10 a few weeks ago. And um, I... I can't even I, I I can't even imagine what that mother is going through today, waking up, even if I, I doubt she even went to sleep. Um, the fact that this happened at a Christian school, this was a hate crime. And we need to start saying it. This was yeah. an attack on Christians. This was an attack on families, good, good families. The pastor of the church lost his beautiful, innocent little girl because of this mentally deranged person, mentally deranged person. And we are fostering that mental illness in this country. We are encouraging it. We are fostering it. We are promoting it. We are looking at it as love and tolerance and equality. No, no. We need to start telling it like it is. This is a mentally ill person. And I pray to God that we don't we don't see more of this. But I don't I don't know what to do, Megan. I don't know what the hell to do. People's heads are in the sand and they're too damn afraid to say what it is because they don't want to be labeled as a bigot or a transphobe. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. That's the thing is it's like there are trans people who are good people and who are living their lives privately without bothering anybody. But let's be honest, there's, there appears to be a disproportionate likelihood of mental illness 
in this particular group. I mean, th- this is not like a perfectly well person doesn't one day declare themselves trans in the middle of their life like this girl did. They don't. And it's no accident and it's no surprise that she was also threatening suicide, right? It's like, and, and no focus on guns <laughs> is going to get us out of problems like this particular shooter. This person's mother was posting repeatedly online about how bad guns are and how we've got to do something to get guns out of schools, upset about things like Sandy Hook. How about your own kid? Like, like, how do you think we get the school shooter? How do you think you get, what makes somebody pick up the gun? Why don't we talk about that? Why don't we always just focus on how they actually got it as opposed to why they want it? That examination is the most important one. And it does start with that mother, this person's declarations in the middle of her life that she was trans. This is like the 16-year-old girl contagion from what it sounds like. She wasn't trans and then suddenly she's trans. And by the way, there was no bullying according to her school colleagues. They're speaking out now. The classmates are saying she was totally supported. You know, like, this isn't a Columbine thing. Like, bully. Like, this is an unwell person. And instead of getting any care from the sound of it, she was probably celebrated as we've seen time after time. Like there's no indication from the mother's media post that the mother did anything other than celebrate the child. And I think the child needed help. The the young woman, she's 28 now. Clearly, clearly. And I think what you just said is really important is we've created like this, uh, this ranking system of citizens in America where, you know, we have the protected classes and we have the oppressors and we have the oppressed, you know, and when you, when you gaslight that and you continually harp on it and it's the pins and the flags and the, you know, it's, it's in your face 24 seven that there are oppressors and oppressed. What the hell do we think is going to happen? What do we think is going to happen as if the actual mental illness in itself isn't enough of a concern? What happens when a society is so freaking fixated on gaslighting that mental illness to say you are oppressed and the people around you are the oppressors, the Christians are the oppressors? What is going to happen? Spring is finally here. The days are getting longer. It's so nice, isn't it? It's so nice to have them get a little longer. The weather's getting a little warmer too. I mean, it is. I hate to even say it out loud, but it is. And we know what this means. It's time to get outside and enjoy your backyard. What better way to do that than with the Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas? The Michael Phelps Signature Swim Spa is the perfect way to create your perfect backyard this season and for many seasons to come. Designed to be used year-round, You can swim, exercise, and relax in the convenience and privacy of your backyard. It's like having your own private oasis at home. Plus, delivery and installation take less than a day once your space is ready. The water current creates resistance so that you can swim in place. And because it is heated, you can choose your perfect water temperature. Enjoy pure relaxation in the massage therapy seats of the swim spa. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You are going to love your Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. Go to masterspas.com slash MK for a special offer right now. You'll save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. Again, go to masterspas.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.